Hey, it's Dinosaur George here to answer more of your questions. Uh, if you've got a question about dinosaurs or prehistoric life in general, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, and look for the page that says Ask Dinosaur George. And there's a form you can fill it out and send it to me. The majority of the emails I get, I try to respond to. I sometimes get between 100 and 1,000 emails a month, so I can't answer all of them, but I try. Most of them, uh, your response will come in the form of an email. Uh, but some of them I'll choose and do this video version. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, Nico, my friend from um, uh, Tigard, Oregon, and thank you, Nico, for explaining how to pronounce your city's name. It's Tigard. Um, uh, you had sent me an email, and you let me know that there's a new baby elephant at the zoo where you work, and I think that's really exciting. Uh, drop me an email. Let me know the elephant's name and whether it's a boy or girl. That's exciting. But you had a question. You wanted to know if I thought T-Rex was smart enough to keep a herd of prey contained in one area. That's a brilliant question. It's very exciting. T-Rex's brain is pretty complex. Uh, my good friend, Professor Lawrence Whitmer from uh, University of Ohio, cat scans the skulls of Tyrannosaurus rexes, and he's able to look at the brain. And from that, uh, he and his colleagues are able to figure out the intellect. Now that's a tough word when it's when you're describing dinosaurs. How do you know what a dinosaur thought? Well, you don't. But you can look at the brain and you look at the size of the brain and uh, uh, identify the part that the thinking takes place. And what they discovered is that it was large compared to dinosaurs, but it wasn't incredibly powerful. So Tyrannosaurus rex, in my opinion, didn't have the ability to really rationalize all the things it would take in order to maintain a herd within, uh, say, his domain or his territory. He wasn't that advanced. What I think would occur, though, was when animals passed through his territory, he absolutely, absolutely took advantage of that and um, was able to do things like set up ambushes or at least be able to predict where the animals would be traveling so that he could position himself to be able to take advantage of that. So even though Tyrannosaurus rex is a pretty advanced dinosaur, and he's, he's smart compared to other dinosaurs, I don't think he possessed the ability to sort of herd dinosaurs and keep them in one area. The other problem with that would be uh, food consumption. Um, we can contain animals like cows, uh, we can contain them, but we have to supply them with food because otherwise they eat themselves out of existence. So in all honesty, dinosaurs needed to come and go and migrate simply so they didn't eat themselves out of existence. But that's a cool question. Okay, uh, I received a question from Ryan R. He lives in Connersville, Indiana. Ryan wanted to know who would win in a fight, Ankylosaurus or Triceratops? I get a lot of these questions about people wanting to know who would win in a fight, and I love answering them. Uh, keep in mind, Ryan, that uh, those kind of things are all, uh, it, it's all theory. I, I don't know for certain, but here's my guess. When you size up these two animals, Ankylosaurus has incredible body armor, very thick, heavy pieces of bone embedded in their skin. We call them scoots. They're sort of uh, in the skin, so they have a little bit of mobility to them. Well, that's like walking around with a suit of armor. And he has a very low center of gravity. That means his body's relatively low to the ground. So attacking an Ankylosaurus is a very difficult thing. Triceratops, on the other hand, has those enormous horns, which are great weapons, incredible. But they're not really designed to penetrate body armor. Those horns are better suited for penetrating soft flesh, like the belly or leg of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, in most instances, herbivores will not fight to the death. They may get into squabbles, but they don't, they don't fight. Um, I would guess if they did, uh, let's say the Ankylosaurus says something rude to the Triceratops and the Triceratops takes uh, offense to it. Let's, let's say that occurs. Um, Ankylosaurus has that incredible body armor. He has that massive club tail and that low center of gravity. Triceratops, on the other hand, those horns are up a little bit higher. If a Triceratops is going to attack, he's going to have to lower his head relatively low to be able to stab Ankylosaurus in a soft spot, which is really his side and his belly. Um, so that already changes the fight because 
Triceratops is already off balance. He's, he's not designed to be lowering his head and charging. He's really designed to charge head up uh, to see what he's hitting. So that, that puts Triceratops at a disadvantage. The other thing is I don't think those horns could penetrate the body armor. And if that Ankylosaurus lands one blow with that massive club, that's going to be lights out for the uh, Triceratops. So in my opinion, if those animals fought, I believe Ankylosaurus is just too powerful and he wins the day. Uh, okay, Alex R. from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he wants to know, he has a question about the Ceratopsians, about Triceratops and all those horned dinosaurs. He wants to know how exactly did they hold their front legs? In old drawings and skeletal mounts in some museum, it shows them with their legs sticking out to the side like a lizard. Uh, but now we see them sort of like rhinoceros with their legs directly underneath. So the question is, how are those legs positioned? He's confused. Listen, Alex, I share your confusion, man. It's, information changes all the time. With new discoveries, there's always changes. So it's not unusual in paleontology to see and hear one thing one day and then to hear the opposite the next. Well, um, they found some Triceratops footprints that helps kind of answer this question. But more importantly, uh, they found a skeleton. Her name is Kelsey. Very complete. See, in a lot of those Ceratopsians, they're not very complete sometimes. But they found this one named Kelsey, and that really kind of helped sort of give us better insight into how they stand. Their legs are not splayed out to the side like a lizard but their legs really weren't held directly underneath them like a rhinoceros. They were sort of in between the two. There was a little bit of splaying taking place, and those front feet kind of point inward, a little, uh, um, we call it pigeon-toed, walk with the feet a little bit in inward. But the legs were not directly beneath, just a little bit out to the side. What that did is that gave that body stability. Those legs positioned the way they are, halfway in and out, kind of gives them stability and allows that animal to run at a lot higher rate because uh, he's not waddling like a lizard, but he doesn't have the structure of a rhino. So I would say those positioning are a little in between. Um, you can see some images online now that give you a little bit interpretation of what the thing is, but that's sort of what it is. And finally, uh, Amar from Banks, Oregon. And Amar, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, Amar wants to know something about Ceratosaurus and Albertosaurus. He wants to know if Ceratosaurus was taller than Albertosaurus. Well, no, he wasn't. Um, Ceratosaurus was actually smaller than Albertosaurus, but let me add this. I read once where they found some bones of a Ceratosaurus, whether it was truly Ceratosaurus or a close relative. These bones were huge, and so it's possible that what we know of Ceratosaurus uh, is, isn't the, the whole story. Ceratosaurus is an incredibly rare dinosaur, and what we know of him really consists of very small pieces of evidence. We don't know that much about him. Most people believe Ceratosaurus was between 12 and maybe, maybe 20 feet in length, but the discovery of these enormous Ceratosaur bones may change all that. So what I'm saying right now about Ceratosaurus being smaller than Albertosaurus, that's based on what I know today. Um, there are absolute uh, dinosaur experts out there who uh, may know more about the subject of Ceratosaurus, and it may very well prove to be much bigger than we think. All right, well, that's it. Um, uh, if you've got questions, again, go to the website, dinosaurgeorge.com. There's a lot of cool stuff to see on the site. Uh, while you're there, sign up for our free monthly newsletter. It's completely free. We do not share your email address with anybody. And uh, we, we have some really cool information in there. Great pictures, great stories, great interviews. Uh, so go to the website. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, and you can also follow me on Facebook. And when you go to the website on the home page, you'll see connections to help you get there and sign up. So follow me on Twitter. It's kind of fun. I'm always giving you new insight. Uh, I also have a blog. You can find it on the website. And I just posted some really cool information about a new feathered dinosaur that I had the chance to look at. Thanks so much. We'll see you. Take care.